In today's video, we have the special privilege of sitting down with Keith, the hotel director on the Mariner of the Seas. Thank you so much for taking the time today. We're so excited to get to know you a little bit, talk about your role here, learn about the Mariner and everything in that regard. So thank you so much. Why don't you start off by telling us a little bit about yourself, where are you from? Thank you, uh, my pleasure to be here. Uh, okay, so my name is Keith. I'm originally from Ireland. Uh, I still live there. Uh, but in the last 20 years, I've sailed with Royal Caribbean, um, working for, as I initially started as a concierge and obviously now a hotel director. Prior to that in Ireland, I was about 11 years in hotels, again, working my way up. Been doing it uh, kind of ever since, in the, always in the service industry, uh, various different aspects of it. When I was at home, I kind of started in pubs and bars, mm -hmm. uh, restaurants, actually dog tracks, any VIP events, VIP weddings and stuff. Uh, I we used to f one of the companies I worked for used to cater for the the president wow. um, and her events that she would have in Ireland at the time. So I would do events in Dublin Castle where you would host uh, the likes of the European Parliament when they were all in session. In Ireland had leadership, so that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, it's been a fairly interesting career. And how long have you been on cruise ships? Uh, January will be coming up in twenty years. With Royal Caribbean? With, always with Royal, Congratulations, yeah. that's Loyal incredible. Royal. <laughs> Wonderful, that, that's very, very impressive. Yeah, I, um, I came for six months for kind of a career break at home yeah. and ended up uh, still here. <laughs> so Never leaving. <laughs> it's, it's been an incredible life. I mean, the travel you get to experience. Yeah. The, you know, a lot of people, you, when you read internet reports and you read crew member stories, a lot of it is very subjective in terms of what they they were promised and what they they yeah. actually did and i mean if you come into and if you do any job anywhere in the world it doesn't matter whether it's nine to five or whether you're working in a hotel or in my case working on a cruise ship now there's pluses and minuses to everything yeah. and as long as you balance it and you can give a fair and equal portrayal of both sides typically working on a cruise ship has more positives than negative. Yeah, and it goes to the point of saying that whenever someone writes a review, you know, nine times out of 10, that review is gonna throw the negative light yeah. and not showcase as many positives, so. Well, we, I mean, even in my own case, and we'll say being in charge of an operation like the hotel, like the hotel aspect of ships, I have my preferences. Right. And one of the biggest things I have to stop myself doing is projecting those on to what I would like to see happen on board. Obviously, a company like Royal Caribbean has um, a brand, okay, and we're, we're all integrated into that brand and we understand it, but there are aspects of that brand where you can make decisions on a daily basis, but, and those are the decisions you have to be very concerned about in terms of, are you projecting your own likes and dislikes mm -hmm. onto something, or are you looking at the actual bigger picture to say that, so I have to wonder about 3,900 different personalities that all have different likes and dislikes, and some more extreme than others. So you, it, that part of it is you can sometimes maybe get carried away in the sense that you can sway too much with your own preferences. Mm. And that does have an effect because at the end of the day, you're leading or part of a team of 1,300 people. Uh, the captain, there's myself, there's the captain who's obviously overall in charge the staff captain who's a member of the executive committee, the chief engineer and the HR manager. So there's five of us that have the purview of the entire ship. And all the decisions that we make have to be based on guest and crew demographics. Right. So, you know, it, it can be, as I say. Big responsibility. It's a big responsibility. It's a privilege. Um, people, as I say, do tend to have their likes and dislikes and just controlling those yeah. and mediating them in the sense of that you've got to take a decision for the everything overall rather than just well i'd like to see karaoke seven nights a week in the middle of the promenade you know so <laughs> which, uh, i particularly know a few family members that would absolutely love yeah, that idea <laughs> but some others might not agree yeah, to that it so can be, it can be a dodgy <laughs> one <all right. laughs> so being a hotel director is has that big responsibility and a privilege like you mentioned. So who is underneath you? What do you oversee? What is kind of like your day to day and the role look like? So I, on a day to day basis, I work with, as I said, 1300 people on board uh, Mariner. The, you have it broken into three areas. You have Marine, or which is broken into deck and engine and navigation. And then you have hotel. So in the hotel aspect, where I have put most of the crew members, probably around 800, 900 of them. 
And then for the day-to-day -day operation, I mean, my purview is restaurants, bars, hotel accommodation, stateroom accommodation, hotel accommodation, uh, entertainment. And in order to do that, I have what they call division heads, mm -hmm. which are report directly to me. So you have a financial controller, a marketing and revenue manager, a cruise director, a food and beverage director, a beverage manager, a restaurant operations manager, a lot of people. <laughs> what else have I got? A guest services manager. Uh, I'm just trying to see the people sitting around. Executive housekeeper. So quite a lot between Going around anywhere. The round table. Yeah, literally, it's, <laughs> it's a round table. Uh, so there's quite a lot of people that, that manage all that process, and of course, it comes down varying by degrees because right. not one person can do it all in any division. So, unless it's my digital marketing person, because he's literally his own division all by himself. Um, I mean, there's definitely a, a management kind of level that, that goes all the way down, entry level, as I say, I came in at entry level. Mm -hmm. And you, you learn the ropes from that as you get more and more. You, not that you have a bigger overview picture of it, but you're dependent on so many people around you in order to make all of that happen on any given day. Right. Um, and it's not even, it's, it's predominantly, of course, it's guest experience at the end of the day, but it's the regular day-to-day -day things that appear to just magically happen throughout the ship that you have to kind of go back and say, did it actually happen, you know? <laughs> so some of that can be a lot of fun. Yeah, when we have fruit and champagne that's magically delivered to our room, there's the process yes. through all of that and to making all of that magic yeah. happen. So with so many people that you oversee, you know, does your day, and especially with so many variations of all the guests and everything mm. like that, does your day s look pretty similar from day to day? Or is there a lot of variation with, you know, different ports and things like that that just life mm. happens and duty calls where it's variated or it looks um, pretty similar? Ships in general have a fairly structured lifestyle. Mm -hmm. uh, you could almost, you know, you could, you could almost equate it to being in a bubble. A because, <laughs> well, I mean, we might we go to all different ports. We go to different countries. We have obviously different demographics of guests who come aboard. You right. Have different types of weather outside. The the one thing about it is that we know if it's a seven day itinerary, I know that on a particular day I've got one day which is uh, um, port day. Masters inspection happens. My department, my division head meetings happen. Um, you have a schedule for maintenance. And obviously they vary slightly, but predominantly would be easily planable. So yeah. we do, we have what we call a, a, a master's calendar, which lists every single day of the month and every, uh, every activity or item of work or maintenance or meeting that we have to do, it's all there. The structure's there so, no matter what. Yeah, it's very, very structured. The only, and, and like that, outside of it is within land operations, anything can happen on any given day. We're just, we have more that can happen here, especially, right. I mean, this cruise, for example, with the hurricane coming down on us, we have to change itinerary. Guests obviously have arrangements at home. Some of them didn't make it. Right. We had 1,800 people who decided to, to brave the elements and come out. We changed, we, go, we, we changed from initial uh, Perfect Day in Coco Cay and Nassau to, now, to initially going to Labadee. And now we're going to go to Cozumel and uh, Costa Maya. So some things like that, while they're huge in, in, in some aspects, it's like just exciting. It's something yeah. different completely. Yeah. You know, Keeps you on your toes. Oh, definitely. I mean, you <laughs> change plans, uh, you're talking about, and again, we have great support from the, our corporate office. Ultimately, they're the ones who take these decisions right. uh, because it concern more than just the mariner of the sea. So when they make a decision, then they, part, they play a huge role in, in reaching out to port agents and authorities in different countries to make sure our clearance process goes okay. But the ship also gets involved in it because we're the ones who are gonna be coming in there. So. Right, incredible. Well, that was a really thorough overview and really interesting to, to hear some of those insights. Thank you for taking us through that. That'll do it for part one of this series. This is a two parts. Next part, we will hear a little bit about the Mariner of the Seas, the different types of room types and cabin categories and learning more about that and a little bit of the ship. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you, Keith, for spending the guys. time. Really fun and enjoyable. Until next time. Ciao for now. Ciao.